but there be no remedy for it, but that thou needs buy and sell men and women like bees. We shall all the world drink brown and white bastard. Oh, heavens, what stuff is here? It was never a merry world, when of the two usuries, the best was put down, while the worst, allowed by law, a fur coat to keep him warm, and fur with fox on lambskin, to signify that craft, being richer than innocency, stands for the facing. Come your way, sir, come. Oh, bless you, good father friar. And you, good brother friar. What offense hath this man made you, sir? Mary, sir, he hath offended the law, and we think him to be a thief as well, sir, before we found upon him a strange picklock, which we have sent to the deputy. Fie, sirrah. A bard, a wicked bard. The evil that thou causest to be done, that is thy means to live. Do thou but think what tis to cram a maw to clothe the back from such a filthy vice? Say to yourself, from their abominable and beastly touches, I do drink, I eat, array myself, and live. Oh, canst thou believe thy living is a life so stinkingly dependent? Go, man, go, man. Sir, it does stink of a sort, yet I would prove that Nay, he... if the devil gives thee proofs of sin, thou must prove his. Oh, take him to prison, officer. Correction and instruction must both work, ere this rude beast will profit. He must be for the deputy, sir, for he's been warned. The deputy cannot abide a whoremaster. Now, if he come before him as a whoremonger, well, he could go a mile on his errand. That were we all, as some would seem to be, from our faults as his fault from seeming free. His neck will come to your waist, sir. <laughs> of course! Oh, I cry bail. Oh. <laughs> Here is a gentleman and a friend of mine. How now, noble Pompey? Uh, what, are the wheels of Caesar? A little bit. Art thou led in triumph? What say you to this tune, matter, and method? Is it sad and few words? How doth my dear morsel thy mistress? Procures she still, huh? Troth, she hath eaten all her beef and is herself in the tub. Oh, why, tis good. <laughs> it must be so. An unshunned consequence. Ever your fresh whore and your powdered bod. <laughs> it must be so. <laughs> uh, art going to prison, Pompey? Yes, faith, sir. <laughs> it's not a miss. Go, trusty Pompey. Say I sent thee thither. For debt to Pompey, or how? For being a bot! For being a bot! <laughs> well then, imprison him, if imprisonment be the due of a bod. For bod is he doubtless, and of antiquity too. Bod born. <laughs> Adieu, trusty Pompey. Commend me to the prison, Pompey. You'll turn good husband now, Pompey. You will keep the house. <laughs> I had hoped your ah. worship would pay my bail. <laughs> Indeed will I not, Pompey. It is not the wear. Uh, uh, I will pray, Pompey, to increase thy bondage. If you bear it not patiently, why then your metal is the more. <laughs> Bless you, friar. And you. Does Bridget paint still, Pompey, huh? Sir. <laughs> come your way, sir, come! You will not prove my bail, sir. Then, Pompey, nor now. Come your way, sir. Get you, you. Nor the pies are fair. <laughs> go to kettle, Pompey, go. <laughs> uh, what news, prior of the Duke? I know none. Can you tell me of any? Huh. Some say he is with the Emperor of Russia. Others, some that he is in Rome. Where is he, think you? I know not where. But wheresoever, I wish him well. It's a mad, fantastical trick of his to steal from the state and usurp the beggary to which he was never born. Angelo dukes well in his absence. He puts transgression to it. He does well in it. Mm. A little more lenity to lechery would do no harm in him. Something too crabbed that way, friar. It is too general a vice, and severity must cure it. Yes, in good sooth. The vice is of a great kindred, yet it is impossible to extirp it quite, friar, till eating and drinking be put down. 
to say this Angela was not made by man and woman after this downright way of creation. <laughs> Is it true, think you? How should he be made, sir? Oh, well, some say a sea maid spawned him. Others that he was got between two stock fishes. What is certain is that when he makes water, his urine is congealed ice. That I know to be true. And he is a motion generative, that's infallible. You are pleasant, sir, and speak apace. Oh. <clears throat> it's a mad, fantastical trick of his to steal from the state. Turn his thing to take away the life of a man with the rebellion of a codpiece. Would the duke that is absent have done this? Nay, ere he would have hanged a man for the getting a hundred bastards, he would have paid for the nursing a thousand. I never heard the absent duke much detected for wit. He was not inclined that way. Oh, sir, you are deceived. <laughs> <laughs> Tis not possible. <laughs> Not the Duke? Yes, your beggar of fifty, and his use was to put a duck in her clack dish. <laughs> the Duke had crotchets in him. He would be drunk, too. That, let me inform you. Oh, you do him wrong. <laughs> Surely. <laughs> Sir, I was an inward of his. A very shy fellow was the Duke, and I believe I knew the cause of his withdrawing. What, I prithee, might be the cause? No, pardon. That's a secret which must remain locked behind the teeth and the lips. However, this I can let you understand. The vast rank of the subject held the Duke to be wise. Wise? Why no question but be wise? <laughs> a very superficial, ignorant, unweighing fellow. Either this is envy and you folly or mistaking. The very stream of life and the business he had held must, upon a warrant in need, give him a better proclamation. That he'll be but testimony in his own bringings forth, and he will appear to the envious as a scholar, a statesman, and a soldier. Therefore, you speak unskillfully. <coughs> or, if your knowledge be more, it is much darkened in your manners. <laughs> Come, sir. I know what I know. I can hardly believe that, since you know not what you speak. But if the Duke shall ever return, as our prayers are, he may. Let me desire you to give your answer before he <laughs> If it be honest you spoke, you have the courage to maintain it. I am bound to call upon you. I pray you, your name. Sir, my name is Lucio, well known to the Duke. He shall know you better, sir if I may live to report you. I fear you not. Oh, you think the Duke will return no more, or you imagine me too unhurtful an opposite. Mm. <laughs> but indeed, I can do you little harm. You'll forswear this again. I'll be hanged first. Thou art deceived in me, friar, but no more. Canst thou tell whether Claudio die tomorrow or no? Why must he die, sir? Why? Fulfilling a bottle with a tongue dish. Would the Duke we speak of have done such a thing? Mm. Mary, this Claudio is condemned for untrusting. This ungenitured agent will unpeople the province with continency. Sparrows must not build in his house eaves because they are lecherous. The Duke yet would have dark deeds darkly answered. He would never bring them to light. Would that he were returned. <clears throat> Farewell, good friar. I pray thee pray for me. I say to thee again, the Duke would eat mutton on Fridays. He's not past it yet. And I say to thee, he would mouth with a beggar, though she smelt brown bread and garlic. Say that I said so. Farewell. No might nor greatness in mortality can censure scape. Back wounding calumny, the whitest virtue strikes. 
What king so strong can tie the gall up in scandalous tongue? Oh, behold, who comes here? Go! Away with her to prison! Oh, good my lord! Oh, be good to oh. me! Oh, your honor's account is a merciful man! Good my lord! Oh. Double and treble admonition, and still forfeit in the same kind. This would make mercy swear and play the tyrant. A bond of eleven years' continuance, may it please your honor. My lady, this is one Lucio's information against me. Mistress Kate Kingdown was with child by him in the Duke's time. He promised her marriage. His child is a year and a quarter old, come Philip and Jacob. I kept it myself. And look how he goes about to abuse me. That fellow is a fellow of much license. Let him be called before us. Away with her to prison. You stinking old cuddle, go to no more words. Cutterboast. My brother Angelo will not be altered. Claudia must die tomorrow. Let him be furnished with divines and have all charitable preparation made. If my brother wrought by my pity, it should not be so with him. So please you, this friar has been with him and has advised him for the entertainment of death. Good even, good father. Oh, blessing goodness on you. As whence are you? Oh, not of this country, though my chance is now to use it for my time. I am a brother of blessed order, late come from the sea in special business for, for his holiness. Ah, uh, what news abroad in the world? Oh, none, except there is such a great a fever on goodness that the disillusion of it must cure it. Novelty is only in request. And as it is as dangerous to be aged in any kind of cause as it is virtuous to be constant in any undertaking. There is scarce truth enough in life to make society secure, but security is enough to make fellowships accursed. Oh, much upon this riddle runs the wisdom of the world. Uh, the news is old enough, yet it is every day's news. I, I, I pray thee, madam, of, of what disposition was the new? Uh, one that, above all other strifes, contended especially to know himself. What pleasure was he given to? Rather rejoicing to see another marry than marry at anything which professed to make him rejoice. A gentleman of all temperance. Oh, but leave we him to his events, with a prayer they may prove prosperous. And let me desire to know how you find Claudio prepared. I am made to understand you have lent him visitation. He professes to have received no sinister measure from his judge, but most willingly humbles himself to the determination of justice. Yet hath he framed to himself many desiring promises of life, which I, by my leisure, have discredited to him, and now he is resolved to die. You have paid the heavens your function, and the prisoner the very debt of your calling. I have labored for the poor gentleman to the extreme assure of my modesty. But my brother Justice have I found so severe that he hath forced me to tell him it is indeed Justice. If his life answer the straightness of his proceeding, it shall become him well, wherein, if he chance to fail, he hath sentenced himself. I'm going to visit the prisoner very well. Oh, peace be with you. Shame on him who's cruel striking, kills for faults of his own liking. Twice treble shame on Angelo to weed my vice and let his grow. Oh, what may man within him hide, though angel on the outward side? How may likeness made in crimes make a promise, practice on our times? To draw with idle spider strings, most ponderous and substantial things, Craft against vice I must apply. With Angelo tonight shall lie his old betrothed, but despise it. So disguise shall, by the disguise it, pay with falsehood faults exacting, and perform an old contracting. 